Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Primatech Pete's. This is a special edition of Primatech Files. The Molly Walker detection system has come back online, and it seems as though we have some new specials that we need to talk about. So we've got some casting news and Heroes Reborn news. Obviously, when it first came out, we all we knew that um, HRG was coming back. So we all know that. We all know that Zachary Levi from uh, Chuck. Is it Levi? Levy. Levy. I always say Levy. Fair enough. Well, we've got him coming and joining in. But we also have one, two, three, four. How many? Sorry. Seven new cast members that have been announced over the past couple of days, with at least two being on the day of the eclipse, which was a great promotional tool that they did not use whatsoever. I was surprised. I guess because it's so far off, though. Like, what can you do at this point? They were essentially announcing a new cast member a day for, like, the Monday before. So I thought it was going to culminate in at least something big coming up for the, the day of the eclipse. And they only ended up just announcing two people. I guess to answer our question from the previous uh, podcast that we just cut, I guess they don't have the same promotional team from Heroes because <laughs> they totally wouldn't use this. So we're talking, of course, about the Supermoon Total Eclipse uh, of the Equinox on March 20th. It was only seen on the other side of the pond for me. I was very bummed. And um, I didn't see it either because it was really cloudy in London. I even went up to my roof of my work to try and see it. And it was not a pretty sight because it was just clouds everywhere. And then about an hour after the eclipse finished, the sun came out and it was a glorious day. Um, But I was looking through Twitter the whole day and the amount of heroes tweets going out and people expecting there to be powers there were so many and yeah i i found one or two which i really liked because they were talking about um heroes powers being deactivated because of the solar eclipse which i thought was quite a better way of putting it because everyone wants the powers but when you've got the powers no one wants to know about them disappearing during the eclipse (laughs) um yeah and that is we're not going to get another one another full one until 2090 and the next partial one is what 2026 2026 i think is the next anything to do with an eclipse is 2026 the next full one is going to be 2090 but to be fair they didn't really have to do that much promotion because the amount of tweets i saw about heroes coming back and um people just talking about it on twitter was generally quite it was quite a lot um we we managed to talk to quite a few people and pretty much got about 100 followers just on that day which was quite impressive let's talk about these castings i i felt old i don't know anybody but that's how i felt when heroes first came out judith secconi um yeah she's from twilight i have no idea i've never seen the twilight films um yeah do you know anything about no, her? No, not at all. I literally, when I Googled it, that's all that said. Twilight actor, cast in Heroes Are Born. And I'm just like, uh, as long as it's not Kristen Stewart? Well, she was the uh, the third announcement. The first one was uh, Robbie Kay from uh, Once Upon a Time. He is quite, he was probably one of the best things about that, that season three run of Once Upon a Time. He was very villainous. Um... He was very good. And also, I think with Zachary Quinto not coming back, you've got to replace the eyebrows with someone else who 
has very distinctive eyebrows. <laughs> well, and Robbie K is pure magic because that kid don't age. He's like 26, 27, which is like my age, and he still looks like he's like 16. Next was um, Danica Yarosh. Yarosh, I think her name is pronounced. She's um, from Shameless. I know who you, I know who that is. Yeah. How? What do you think about her? Have you seen her? Um, I think she's the one that plays Mandy. Or no, she's the one that used to be uh, Debbie's friend, and she's a real bitch. So, so, and she's good at it though, is what I mean. And so, I think that every, I, I think she's the Claire, probably. Yeah. Um. And then they then was re- announced Judith Sacconi from Twilight. Day after that was someone called Kiki Suzani. I think her name. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um. Basically, I looked for her on Twitter, and I looked. Sorry, I found her. I looked for her on IMDb, and she has nothing to her name. Um. But she did have a thing on YouTube of her doing like um stunts at not stunts but like um martial arts training with like swords and stuff so she can handle herself is she asian yes um so yeah with those four they all looked pretty young and so when i yeah yes and we also had henry zebrowski from a to z um but no but with the initial first four casting i thought well they all look pretty young and that trailer had um hrg looking after someone young so Instantly, my mind went into theory crafting, and I thought that, well, I thought it was going to be a thing of a school, <laughs> like a hero school with a an X Men style caper with Professor HRD, HRG at the helm and Zachary Levi as his Magneto. <laughs> That's what I came up with, but um, but then they then they announced Henry Zabrowski, who is no way young looking whatsoever. He um, was in A to Z or A to Z. I don't know how um, you want to pronounce it, but um, he was the comedy sidekick. He was what most pilots had this year, which was a husky bearded comedy sidekick. And I think he's I think they're going to put him up as the hero style character, the kind of comedy aspect to, you know, kind of give everything a bit more of a funny vibe as opposed to just being downhill down all the time. And then finally we got Ryan Guzman and Gatlin green. Uh, Ryan is obviously from the step up movies. It's the only thing I can remember him from. You saw the step up movies, Ricky. I love the step up movies. They are my guilty pleasure. Well, everything from two onwards. Number one, I, I, I haven't watched, but no, he's in like, I think the final two and I don't watch it sounds I don't know that's going to sound really pervy but I don't watch I don't I don't watch the step up movies for their their brilliant acting I watch it for the dancing because I quite like the the whole dance routines kind of business about it so I don't really remember Ryan Guzman but I do remember watching those films and being like this isn't the best acting that's going on so <laughs> yeah and Gatlin Green I haven't found anything about her either oh yeah I have no idea who that is unknowns though because i didn't know who hayden panettiere was and even though i didn't like claire she did go on to do some stuff that i like like i really like her on nashville and so it's always you know this is supposedly only supposed to be a limited series so i love to see the next batch of kids kind of come up and make their bones Mm, but that's the thing as well like when i first watched heroes i had no idea who hardly any of them were so and that kind of made it for me because you know you don't go in with any preconceived notion of what kind of character they're going to play or anything like that you just learn as you go along um and with this one i know who about maybe three of them so we'll see we shall see i'm quite excited that we're casting but i'm kind of bummed that we haven't shot anything for heroes reborn yet yeah the um the cast the castings just finished i don't know if they're going to announce any more um but they don't start shooting until maybe i think it's either like this this month or next month i think um jack coleman tweeted out about the the eclipse and saying uh was heroes reborn being shot now but i've read on numerous sites that it doesn't start actually until april which means that they probably won't get it out until the fall which is quite a shock because when it first came out, it said summer 2015, and that has since gone. Well, too bad they didn't just move it to 2016, because it could totally be a mid-season. 
That's usually when people do stuff like this, if this is truly intended to just be 13 and done. Do you remember when they did the 24 mini event? Was that a mid-season report? That was in the fall, but that's Fox, not NBC. <laughs> Let's just be real here. NBC is starting to be a second tier network. No offense, but everybody kind of knows it, especially for like sci-fi and fantasy shows. Nobody really wants to give a show like that a chance considering what they did with Constantine. Like Grimm has been the only show to really survive in that genre on NBC and it's because it's on a Friday. So I'm nervous. I don't even know what day they would put Heroes on, whether it be the mid-season or not. It better not be a Friday is all I know. That That's the biggest thing you need to ask yourself. Where is NBC going to put this thing? Yeah, we'll see. They were also doing, obviously, they're doing a web, they're doing the prequel, not prequel, but like the webisodes that lead into Heroes Reborn. Um, and I also reached out to someone who's working on the promotional stuff uh, about graphic novels. Um, whether they were going to have graphic novels like weekend, like tie-ins, and they didn't say yes, um, but they also didn't say no. They just said that there's a lot of ideas being banding about to um, for for tie-ins for the show, and graphic novels is one of them. But they haven't been able to commit to it yet, so maybe we'll be looking to that. In this era of the Arrow and the Flash having uh, comic book tie-ins for their series specifically, that they wouldn't be able to do it for free anymore. It would probably be 99 cents. Yeah, that's true, actually. Isn't it? And I think that's probably why they're pretty hesitant about saying whether or not they're going to be tie-in graphic novels, because at this point they will definitely have to do that. But how, how many pages are the... They're 32 pages. See, if they carried on with the six pages, they could get away with it. <laughs> Um, and then we don't know, obviously, if there's going to be an eye story because the eye stories were quite uh, the slash heroes evolutions stuff was actually quite big for the site as well, for the NBC site as well. So we don't know anything about that. But I, like I said, I'm really thinking that they honestly only need for this to be 13 episodes. So do you know what I mean? They're like it's like they need that like thing, and so I think that that's another thing they can't figure out what to do. I think if they are going to do it, they have to try and keep it down to the one season and not do anything else because that will be a good kind of like it's a good it's a good amount of episodes to tell a story, and it won't be fillery at all. It will just be straight to the point, like uh, Sleepy Hollow season one. Well, it shouldn't be fillery, is what you should say. <laughs> Um, but I'm hoping that this will lead to um, what they're doing with American Horror Story, which is every year just changing the cast. Like how well, it was no. meant to be? Yes. I really would like it to be how it was meant to be, but they'd have to change the name like every year. So it'll be like Heroes Reborn, Heroes Rebooted. Heroes Redemption finally a close <laughs> to freaking the would-be yes. season five. <laughs> I think that actually would work because we did label it in volumes initially. I think that would actually really work and kind of be a better legacy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think if they keep it enclosed into one kind of story, that it will have a definitive beginning, middle and end. But the way that American Horror Story has started to do it now is there there are links between all this all the different kind of different anthologies that there are the different versions there are like now that they've started to mix like characters that are coming back in into one or like there's relatives of like another character i think that will kind of be good if they if the, if they did go forward and do more than one season of this mini event but Either way. Well, you know what's weird, right, is that um, and I was actually going to bring this up in the podcast because they kind of brought it up in this episode where HRG talks about having a person like Silent on the loose and things going wrong 14 years ago. And we learned that when uh, Nine from Doctor Who, yeah. Chris Rashline, comes in, and he used to be the partner and he went rogue. And so there were yeah. people with powers before. So I really feel like this could be like next gen kind of thing. You know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? Yeah. Because that, yeah. that's how heroes felt, like, with that backstory and with generations, when we got into generations, we'd seen all these people before, and it's like every so often a group of heroes have to come together. And if they just would have yeah. waited a little longer, it would have been even more perfect. But at this time, NBC is really struggling to find viewers. So yeah. I understand why they did it. <laughs> and we still know nothing! <laughs> I know, right? And I think I think that's a really good thing. I think that's a really good thing, because it can only make people want it more be it, the the less you know about it the kind of more people you will get trying to view it on the first go and then that's where they try and hook people in because most of the time you will have a show and you kind of especially with comic book shows you have 
something that you can relate it to because you've read the comics. Whereas this, um, I think the more secrets they keep, the more kind of audiences will clamor to watch the show, if you get me. I mean, do you feel that way? I totally do. But then again, TV has changed so drastically since the beginning of Heroes and even the end of Heroes that I can't tell anymore. Like, I don't think people don't watch TV the way that they do. They used to like at all. And I don't know, like, I don't know what's an acceptable number for NBC anymore. I don't know what they're expecting. Like, I don't think that they should be expecting ABC, CBS, or even CW. Honestly, like the flash gets like a 1.6, which like, you know, at the end of the day is basically what shield gets over on ABC. And I think Constantine was getting like 0.7s, 0.8s, and they weren't happy with that. So Mm. I don't know what a good number NBC is expecting. If it's not the blacklist or SVU, you know, so I'm really nervous about this. Um, I definitely think they, I, I like the lack of promotion until it's like really time for it. It's just like here and there. Hey, just to remind you, we got this coming. <laughs> but I also think that they can't really do that much promotion because they've only literally just started to cast it and they haven't even filmed anything yet. Even the only thing they did film is probably, well, the only thing that they did film was the Super Bowl trailer and most of that was CGI. So yeah. Which I hope most of the show is at CGI. I hope oh, they're not yeah. trying to pull a Rod- Rod- uh, Robert Rodriguez and just have everything. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm excited though. Like the closer, well, I want the closer. The more, like the closer that we supposedly get to, to the premiere, the happier I am. I think. I think even the fact that they haven't even released a premiere today is. is, is it's just scary. Great as well. It's like, are you going <laughs> to yeah. change your mind on this? Oh no. We- They've already changed it once. It was summer. Now it's just 2015. So who knows? Maybe there'll just be a, a post, another trailer with a poster and it will just 2016. say 2016. <laughs> <laughs> I would die if that happened, but I honestly think that this, the way that it seems is that it would be a good mid season, January, 2016 premiere when a lot of shows are on hiatus. Yeah. Instead of having to compete in what seems like the fall with a lot of mm. new shows, with a lot of buzz that are coming out. But, to be to be fair as well, I've been reading through a lot of tweets of people who are fans of the actors. Like Robbie Kay's got quite a few people who are only watching it because he's in it. I think um, some of the castings, even though they're unknown, some of them are quite known to like their little fandoms. So maybe that maybe maybe that will work for them. I just hope they don't go like too young. Like I, I know there was a point in the CW where I literally had to quit watching because I transitioned out of their demo. <laughs> So like love stories and all that. I was like, I gotta get the hell away from this CW. Like, I just hope it doesn't end up all like like that. Like too much love interest and like high school drama. Like if they're all just a pack of clears, I don't know how excited. I'm oh no, if they, I wouldn't be happy about that. All a pack of Claire's mixed in with a pack of Sanders's. <laughs> you know what? Oh. They should totally try to get uh, Micah back. Oh I, yeah, I think that, that would be interesting. I think Micah and Molly. Oh my God! Yes. We should kind of like just tweet to them like, hey, dear at NBC and at Heroes Report, whatever happened to Micah and Molly? (laughs) Especially with most of the cast being quite young, it would be a good, nice um, kind of transition from the old season to the new season. That was that. That was uh, our little special extras episode. A lot happened this week in the Heroes Reborn news front. So we felt obligated to fill you in in (laughs) case you are not a Twitter or, you know, news uh, entertainment news junkie. So there you have it. Tell them where they can find us. You can find us on iTunes. Download our podcast. Don't stream it. Rate and review us as well. It helps with the algorithm, the great algorithm. Um, check out Southgate Media on iTunes and check out that. So you can listen to their, their other podcasts. They're not just TV shows, they are also general popular culture. You can also find them at southgatemediagroup.com. They have blogs and oh, blogs. Yeah, see, that's the English way of saying it. They have blogs and everything as well that you can read. Good reads. Um, if you liked our podcast, be sure to tell your friends and, you know, get our numbers up because we like numbers. Um, follow us on Twitter at Primatech Files. Uh, we live tweet every week. Just join the hashtag Primatech Files to join the conversation. Um, you can find us on Facebook and you've guessed it. You can search the words Primatech Files and find us. Give us a like. Uh, If you want to send us emails about any of the episodes that have happened or asking us questions, you can email us at 
primatechfiles at gmail.com. And finally, you can find me at Twitter at Ricky J D S R I C K Y J D I A Z or Z if you are an American. Lilith? You can find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire. I am on a Tumblr, LilithFairyHellfire.tumblr.com. Uh, please be sure to check out my blog, which is dedicated to comic books and pop culture in general. Uh, LittlePopCultureVulture.blogspot.com. So yeah, hit them with our, uh, our tagline. Uh, download the podcast, Save the World. <laughs>